Hi guys, I'm Priyanshi and I'm a CA final student. I'm also currently working. Today I have with me Isha and she's going to talk about the CSIR NET exam, also called as the NATE exam. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. So Isha, could you talk a little bit about what this exam is for and what are some of the things people can do after pursuing a PhD? NATE stands for National Eligibility Test and once you qualify for this examination, you are basically eligible to apply for any lectureship position uh, in any universities and colleges and you are also eligible to pursue your PhD from any Indian institute. So if you are interested in teaching in Indian colleges and universities or you are interested in doing your research in Indian institutes, it's always a great idea to qualify for this NATE examination. And there are also a few state eligibility tests, but it's always better to prepare for the NATE exam because once you qualify the NATE exam, you are eligible to apply in any university or institute across the country. There won't be any restriction based on your residential state or anything like that and also uh, the syllabus for this NATE exam is broader and if you prepare for NATE exam you can actually also apply for the state level tests and it will be easier for you to deal with those exams also so always make sure that you are preparing for the NATE exam. So if you want to stay in the world of academics, PhD is the very first step that you will have to take because technically you can teach in colleges as soon as you complete your masters but there's a lot of competition in the world of academics and if you complete your PhD that will obviously give you some advantage and also you can get your post doctorates and like be a scientist, you can keep doing your research if that really uh, is interesting for you. So yeah, in the world of academics, PhD is like the first step that you will have to take after you complete your masters and for that, like if you want to do that in India, NATE examination is kind of a must. And I qualified for the biology NATE examination which I think is a little different from all other subjects. So when you are studying biology in your college, like for the bachelors and masters, you do not cover the entire syllabus. So most of the courses are like either uh, zoology or botany or physiology or biochemistry or microbiology so there are like a very few universities or colleges in India that teaches like the entire biological science or life science syllabus in the bachelors and masters now when you are sitting for this NATE examination you have to do it all so if you have studied zoology for your bachelors and masters you will have to learn bits and pieces of botany physiology biochemistry to qualify this NATE examination and that's where it is a little different from all other subjects and that is where you need to strategize a bit because just hard work is not enough you will have to work smart and I think um, like in my uh, journey I decided to work smart along with working hard and that that really helped me to qualify this examination and I'm going to give you a few tips that will help you to work smart and qualify this examination and it won't be very difficult for you. So my next question is, when did you start the preparation for this exam? I started doing that as soon as I enrolled myself for the master's course. So from my very first semester, I was studying for my semester exams and I was also preparing for my NET exam. And I did this for quite a few reasons. So number one, I knew that I will have to qualify for this exam before I complete my master's because, you know, a lot of people wait like uh, they want to complete their master's and then go for uh, this NET exam and then they're like okay I will decide if I want to do my PhD or not but it's always a good idea to decide this when you are still doing your masters because once it's complete you kind of get frustrated because you don't have anything else to do but once you qualify the NET exam when you are still doing your masters you are like okay now I have an option of joining PhD as soon as I complete my masters and anyways PhD takes up a lot of your time so say you are completing your masters when you are 23 and you enroll for your PhD as soon as possible then also you will take five years and you will end your PhD when you are 28 years old which is like a long time right and if you take longer to qualify for the NATE exam and then uh, apply somewhere for your PhD this time gets even longer and it will make you very very frustrated trust me so it's always important to qualify this exam 
when you are still studying for your masters and also when you are preparing and appearing for the exam while you are still studying you are in a lot more practice you know you are still studying those things uh, and you are facing the similar type of questions for your net exam and i think it makes the process way easier and keeping these things in mind i started my preparation as soon as i got into my masters and for coaching i did not join any institute because this is again my personal choice i don't do really well when there's a huge group of students studying for a uh, one competitive exam in an institute that does not work for me it did not work for me when i was preparing for my medical entrance exams and i learned from that mistake and i did not do that again so i used to uh, study my like papers uh, when i was still studying my bachelors and i had a very good teacher uh, during my bachelors and he along with another professor helped me and a few of my friends to prepare for my net examination so that was the only um, coaching that i tried so these days like there are a lot more options there are a lot of online courses i think in udemy or um, yeah so there are a lot of courses i will try to give the links in the description box like i will tell priyanshi about those courses and she will link them in the description box down below so yeah that was the only kind of coaching that i enrolled myself in to prepare for this exam so isha what are some of the changes you made in your preparation from your first attempt to your next few attempts which helped you crack the exam and secure a good rank okay so i appeared for this examination four times okay so like every year this examination is conducted twice just like your semesters once it happens in june and then again in december and in my first two attempts i could not qualify for this examination and i worked really hard so it kind of broke my heart a little and then i realized that i'm working very hard but i need to strategize better i need to plan better and i did that and in the next two attempts i secured really really good rank. thanks so here's what i did i realized that the syllabus is very vast okay and it's impossible to cover it all like i can go through everything but it will be half hearted there won't be any particular topic that i have like learned in the best possible manner i have learned all i cannot do that for all the modules that are there and the syllabus is really big so i realized that in the examination there's a lot of options so for example there's a group c in this paper and uh, like there are total 75 questions that come and you have to answer just 25 so even if you are like covering two third of your syllabus you will get 50 questions that you know right like practically that's how it works and then from 50 you will have to answer 25 so if you have studied very well from those 50 questions you will probably recognize at least 35 40 and answering 25 questions from those uh, 40 questions that you have recognized is not tough right so you don't have to cover everything make sure that the parts that you are covering you are doing it really well so that's what i did there were parts of the syllabus that i left out like completely i did not try to cover them at all and when the syllabus was reduced i could spend more time learning each of the topics that i was doing and in that manner i think i studied better i left out a lot of things i did not spend any time for them but the topics that i decided to go ahead with i got a lot of more time to spend with those topics and i learned them a lot better so this is one thing that really really changed uh, the way i prepared in the next two attempts and the, in the last two attempts and yeah this helped me to secure really good ranks and i also realized it's very important to have thorough theoretical knowledge it's very important to go through the basics uh, to study the books you know because uh, initially i thought that i can practice from the mcq books and that will be like a shortcut way to success i can find all the questions that usually come in the examination but it really does not work like that you will have to study the books you will have to take in the basic knowledge you will have to understand the theory and i did i started doing that for my last two attempts i went through the books like the books for each of the subject and once i gained that knowledge 
even without practicing a lot of mcq it became very easier for me so when i st when i was attempting the those questions i realized that like the questions come directly from whatever i have studied so once the theory is clear once that basic knowledge is clear you will uh, you will like the questions as soon as you see them you will recognize that oh, okay this is from that part of the book and we'll be able to answer it it's really easy and practicing for mcq is obviously important but i think learning from the books is way more important so once i completed studying the books i practiced mcq from a few books but yeah it's it's more important to gain the theoretical knowledge first from the books so make sure that you are reading the books and uh, that's what i did and that really helped me a lot Thank you for sharing that. So, what are some of the resources that students can use for this exam? So, for resources, as I mentioned before, read books. That's like the most important part, and read the books that are the best for that particular subject. So, for example, if you are studying developmental biology, study Gilbert. If you are studying immunology, study Kobe. These books are like the best basic books for those subjects. So yeah make sure that you are doing that i will give a list of all these books and also whenever you have any doubt especially in solving the problems or stuff like that you can uh, like check out any online resource so there's this channel called shomu's biology this is an youtube channel only and he has like explained a lot of things related uh, to this net examination like he has very detailed videos and if you watch them a lot of your doubts will be cleared so make sure that you are watching that also wikipedia helps a lot i did a lot of studies in wikipedia and yeah it actually works so yeah whenever you have any doubt google i think google answers 90% of your questions and there are a few online courses i will give links to all of them and you will find them in the description box down below but the most important thing is reading books and yeah once you uh, complete reading your books uh, for mcq you can uh, buy this book from pathfinder so there's a set of book and the mcqs are like like very relevant to the net exam and they're like very helpful so i practiced that book it really helped me a lot that was the only mcq book that i consulted i think there are a few other from ari hunt and a few other uh, companies but yeah you, you can just buy one and if you ask me the best one it's pathfinder uh, book so yeah you can buy so how should one approach the exam when they are writing it and also what are some of the do's and don'ts for the exam So the preparation part is fifty percent, and the rest fifty percent is how you approach the examination. And when you do it right, your chance of qualifying the examination obviously increases. So be very calm when you go there, and when you are like appearing for the examination, be very calm and composed. Like don't panic because you know that you have prepared in the best possible manner. you could not do it better so don't panic be very calm because when you panic you tend to do a lot of silly mistakes so make sure that you are not making any silly mistakes the next thing that you have to keep in mind is avoiding negative marking and it's so important a lot of people fail to qualify the exam even when like their preparation is top notch is because they are answering a lot of questions that they think they know but actually they are wrong and uh, like that gives them negative marking and it's it's so important guys because uh even 0.25 marks matters a lot and if you are like getting minus 1 for each of the wrong answers that can like totally change your game and it can bring your rank down so make sure that you are attempting the questions that you are very sure about like don't rush into answering anything and even if you are answering something in the question paper like before uh, transferring that to the omr sheet check it recheck it make sure that it's right and you don't have to answer all the questions as i mentioned before there are a lot of options so find the questions that you know like you are very very sure about and answer only those like for example in group c you have to answer 25 questions If you know, like, if you are sure about twenty-one, make sure that you are answering twenty-one. Don't try to go for twenty-five because that. And if those four answers are wrong, that's like minus four for you. 
So, uh, you could get like 21 correct answers, but with that minus 4, it is like 20 correct answer and this 4 mark difference can like totally change your uh, rank can like can like you won't probably get a rank if you are getting four marks less so don't take those risks avoid negative markings as much as possible also when you get the question paper don't waste your time you know going through the whole thing uh, in the first 15 to 20 minutes find the parts that you are very con confident about and answer those questions this actually boosts your confidence a lot so in the first 15 to 20 minutes if you have answered say 5 to 10 questions and that's like uh, getting 20 or 30 marks secured in the first 30 minutes and that boosts your confidence a lot so make sure that you are doing that and there will be parts of the question paper that you are not prepared for that you always find difficult don't go through that at all because that will bring your confidence down you will waste a lot of time you won't be able to solve those questions and you will end up panicking so reach out to the parts that you know that okay fine these are the parts that i'm very well prepared for and i will be able to answer these questions and yeah start answering them as soon as you get the question paper so that is one thing that really helped me don't go through the entire thing because anyways you will have to again read those questions when you are answering them so don't waste your time like that and also there's a section in the beginning where you have to solve a few logic and maths problem if you are good in maths and logic kind of questions then attempt that at first but if you are not very good leave that for like the later half of the exam it's always a great idea to start off with the most difficult part the group c because uh, it's not difficult but the questions are a little bigger and each question carries four marks so if you can answer like two three in the very beginning that's like getting uh, 15 marks in the very beginning and that again boosts your confidence as i mentioned before so yeah and uh, that's pretty much it don't panic answer very strategically be very smart by answering the questions and i'm sure that this will help you to qualify the exam if you have prepared for it and if you follow these strategies you will get good rank what were some of the challenges that you faced during your preparation and what is your advice for the students who are preparing for this exam okay so challenges um basically i was never very good with mcq kind of question papers i was not good at these competitive exams i just did not know how to uh, you know go with them and i i used to make the mistake of uh, randomly answering questions i used to get a lot of negative scores and that like kind of ruined all the competitive exams that i had appeared for before this uh, net exam and i could not do uh, well in the first two attempts i did not get any rank and I was a little heartbroken initially because I was really working hard but that kind of changed my perspective because I realized that I'm really working hard but there's a little like maybe I, I, I lack something and that's not hard work so in, along with working hard I decided to work smart so as I said before I started following all the strategies because in the in, in the initial part of my preparation I was trying to cover the entire syllabus but I stopped doing that I started concentrating on the papers and subjects that were really really very interesting and the, I am uh, like a zoology graduate so I studied zoology for for my bachelor's and my master's and in the next examination there were questions from biochemistry botany physiology and all those parts so i decided to leave out a few modules so i personally was not very confident with the biochemistry module and the a few papers from physiology so i decided to leave them out completely i concentrated totally in my zoology papers and the botany papers microbiology papers uh, genetics molecular biology because those were the things that I, were, I was very confident about i was interested in learning those things and i like when the syllabus came down to this uh, it was easier to prepare and it helped me a lot in the last two attempts and also i think i started making a lot of my personal notes and this is very important so i used to do this for my college exams but for my net examination i was not doing that but i realized that it's very important to have your own personal notes so even if you are studying from a study material that's already like there are pointers over there or there are like these graphs over there flowcharts over there it's all 
always important to have your own visuals own kind of you know short forms for any term or your own um, uh, like your own way of making notes because when you do that first of all writing things down helps you to memorize things better and when you do this you create it in your own system and this helps you to remember it better so always make sure that you are having your own notes i did that and like that helped me to visualize everything in the examination hall so when when i was seeing a question i was like okay this is what i wrote down this is how i described it to myself so always make sure that you are studying it in a manner as if like you are teaching it to yourself or some imaginary students this helps this helps a lot for uh, preparing for any of these exams so when you are explaining it to some imaginary people or even to yourself that helps you to remember it better i did this and it was like a game changer for me and yeah don't lose your heart if you are not being able to clear this examination in the very first attempt i mean a lot of people do that and maybe you will be able to do that too so and it's great if you can do that but if it's not uh, happening then don't lose your heart because it's not a very easy examination okay like you really need to work uh, hard and work smart to qualify this examination so don't lose your heart learn from your mistakes uh, just go back and see what's going wrong uh, what changes do you need to make in your preparation and do that accordingly and i'm sure you will be clearing this examination before uh, completing your masters so yeah these are all the little tips that i wanted to share with you guys if you have more questions you can ask them to me uh, you can reach out to me in instagram my instagram handle is asia's life hacks and uh, if you need some help with time management or uh, you know how to uh, plan uh, your studies and stuff like that you can watch my youtube channel too i'll make a few videos that can help you with your time management skills and everything so my youtube handle will be linked down below and that's it yeah all the best for your future and i hope you have found this video helpful also please do follow priyanshi if you have not subscribed to her channel yet please do she is doing an amazing job i really love her channel and i wish i could watch uh, something like this when i was a student but priyanshi did not make all these videos back then but she is doing that now so kudos to her and make sure that you are subscribed to her channel and yeah that's it bye Thank you so much for sharing all of these tips Isha they were really helpful thank you so much for coming to my channel guys you can also check out Isha's channel Isha's life hacks it will be linked below in the description do check out her channel she has some great videos on time management and to do lists and there are a lot more coming up you can also follow her on instagram it will be linked below in the description thank you so much for watching